Let's go! I know I've been saying it a lot recently, but things are lining up extremely well for the future of Ethereum. As you know, the events in traditional finance are causing more people than ever to look towards decentralized finance as the future. So more and more people are going to start to understand that DeFi is here to stay. And this will of course bring more users to Ethereum. And as I've explained in my video yesterday, there are a lot of Ethereum competitors that are either working on or have already implemented some form of integration with Ethereum. And this will serve to bring even more volume into the Ethereum network. But if we are to get more volume into the Ethereum network, how is the network itself going to be able to solve this problem with high transaction costs? And let's just face it that we are not at the place which we would want Ethereum to be at right now. But there are some projects that are working on scaling Ethereum. And this is definitely something you need to know about because if Ethereum is going to be the go-to platform to build the next level of decentralized finance on, then perhaps some of these projects are going to be instrumental in actually making that happen before we see 2.0 potentially solving those problems. So guys, today we're going to talk about that. I'm also going to touch on Ethereum 2.0 at the end of the video and what that upgrade will actually look like as well as the timeline of its implementations because a lot of people are eagerly awaiting its arrival and I'm sure I am one of those. So I will start with the most obvious and primary issue with Ethereum and that is of course the insane gas fees. This has been an unfortunate side effect of the rapid growth that Ethereum has been seeing over the past year. As more and more people start using the Ethereum network and the wide variety of platforms built on top of it, the number of transactions being sent has of course also increased. So as you can see in this chart right here, the number of transactions being sent every single day on Ethereum is around 1.25 million. To understand why this causes high fees and long transaction times, a short explanation of how transactions are confirmed on the Ethereum blockchain is needed. For now, Ethereum is still a proof of work blockchain. So the process of a transaction being confirmed goes like this. First, someone sends a transaction and signs it with their private keys. This could be something as simple as sending a friend a fraction of an Ethereum token or as complicated as swapping ERC20s on a DEX or using some other DeFi protocol. Regardless of its complexity, that transaction request is then broadcasted to the Ethereum network where nodes add it to the mempool, which is the group of all transactions that have been submitted but not confirmed in an actual block. At some point after the transaction enters the mempool, it is added to a group of several dozen or even hundreds of transactions. This is the most important step in regard to gas fees and transaction times. Every transaction is accompanied by a transaction fee. If you have ever sent a transaction on Ethereum, then you know that you can actually set the fee to any amount you want. However, the amount you choose can have serious effects on how long it takes for your transaction to be confirmed. Because miners will of course choose the transactions with the highest fees first because they receive the fees for doing the work of confirming them. This means that in general, the higher the fee you pay, the faster your transaction will be confirmed. This is a logical system in theory, but as the number of people using Ethereum has skyrocketed, the competition to get your transaction confirmed has gone up as well. This is what leads to the increases in gas prices. So. As frustrating and inconvenient as these fees are, there is some consolation to be found in the fact that they will not stay this high forever. This is what brings me to the next part of this video. There are already a lot of promising projects devoted to scaling up the capabilities of Ethereum. Of course, everyone is going to enjoy lower transaction costs and speeds, but what is even more exciting for some people is the potential to make insane gains on these projects which are working on scaling Ethereum right now. So there are two basic approaches to scaling a blockchain and they are referred to as layer one and layer two. Layer one scaling takes an on-chain approach and aims to increase the throughput of the base layer blockchain itself. Layer two scaling works on solutions that take transactions and computations off the Ethereum base chain. So it does the work off chain and then in some way it plugs back into the Ethereum chain. So that's basically how you can explain 
layer 2 scaling solutions. So up first is Yumizi Go. Yumizi Go, or OMG for short, is a trustless, non-custodial, layer 2 scaling solution focused on the transfer of value on Ethereum. The six primary benefits of OMG as stated by their websites, that is fast, cheap, secure, green, open, and trustless. Those are all important, but most people will care primarily about speed and cost. Using OMG allows the transfer of Ethereum and ERC20 tokens at a speed of thousands of transactions per second. This is a massive upgrade over the current throughput of between 5, I would say 15 to 20 transactions per second on native Ethereum. OMG also cuts down the fees, allowing the operation of a business or project at about one third of the cost of doing it directly on Ethereum. This leads into one of OMG's main goals, which is to make Ethereum more attractive for enterprise use. After all, most large companies would not choose to or even be able to operate on a network limited to 20 transactions per second. The OMG network uses what is known as Plasma Architecture in its scaling solutions. How Plasma Architecture actually functions is a little complex to get into right now, but all you really need to know is that it is one of the most popular methods for layer 2 scaling. Another benefit of OMG is that they have worked very hard to make using their network as easy as possible for developers, especially in relation to APYs. APIs are being used more than ever by small projects and businesses alike, and OMG has optimized what they call API suits to perfectly meet the needs of anyone that chooses to build on their network. When looking at OMG as an investment, there are a couple of factors outside of its actual functionality that make it favorable. First of all, the entire supply of all OMG tokens is already circulating. This is always nice to see because investors do not have to worry about being dumped on during future token releases. Another positive factor is that the company behind OMG was involved in payment processing even before it got into cryptocurrency. This has provided them with more experience in the sector than most other projects in the space. So, I have talked about Matic before in a video on my Satoshi Stacker channel, but any video about layer 2 scaling projects would not be complete without at least a brief overview of Matic. Matic also uses Plasma architecture, but it has adapted and changed it a little bit. The Matic network uses proof-of-stake checkpoints which are pushed to the Ethereum main chain as you can see in this model right here. This system enables up to 65,000 transactions per block and in theory millions of transactions on multiple sidechains in the future. Similar to OMG, Matic also decreases the cost and speed of these transactions but a benefit of Matic that OMG does not offer is that in the future Matic will enable cross-chain asset interoperability. Interoperability is a big thing right now, which is a large part of why Polkadot is seeing so much hype around it. Matic also has created a useful developer toolkit to speed up the process of adoption. And then one last good sign for Matic is that it is having the backing of major corporations such as Coinbase, Binance and much much more. So. Of course, we need to talk about the coin itself. So on the tokenomic side of things, Matic has a market cap of $194 million, which is less than half of that of OMG. Currently, a bit less than half of the entire supply of Matic tokens are circulating. But as you can see in the schedule here, the release process is fairly gradual, which should help to negate any adverse price action caused by token unlocks. So while projects such as OMG and Matic are important and help to provide essential services to specific customers, a lot of people are still waiting for the base layer of Ethereum itself to be upgraded in what will be a layer one scaling solution, of course. This is what the long-awaited Ethereum 2.0 upgrade is going to do. The process that will be implemented is known as sharding. Sharding speeds up transactions and lowers network congestions by essentially splitting Ethereum into 64 shard chains that will run in parallel and communicate with each other through what is called the beacon chain. Ethereum 2.0 will also be implemented in a proof-of-stake system, which is much more efficient than the current proof-of-work system. It will also make Ethereum greener, so to speak, in the sense that it will no longer use massive amounts of electricity to maintain the network, which is something it and other proof-of-work chains have been criticized for in the past. 
Currently, phase zero of Ethereum 2.0 has been completed, which means that the beacon chain is live. The next phase will implement the chart chains and that is intended to arrive at some point during this year. The final phase, which will be uh, merging the mainnet Ethereum with the beacon chain, is not anticipated to arrive until 2022. That is definitely a substantial of amount of time to wait, but this is why we have coins such as Matic and OMG. And they will likely be utilized by a lot more people in the meantime to pick up the slack in the time Ethereum is taken to be upgraded. So these are my two coins I am eyeing right now when it comes to scaling Ethereum. So what are your coins you're watching right now? Let me know down in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe if you are not yet subscribed to the channel. And uh, I've got a video popping up in the middle of this video right now. Make sure to watch it. I will see you right there.